Hi, welcome back to another edition of Easy Theory. So let's continue from where we left off. So we've been talking about these things called NFAs. And what it stands for is non-deterministic finite automata. So what is this? So we've been talking about these state-based machines. So let's just say we have a little state-based machine that does something like this, something simple. And this is, let's just say the alphabet is A, only a symbol A. So this is obviously a DFA because every single state has um, exactly one transition coming out of it. And so what is an NFA? What an NFA does is it allows us to have additional transitions on a particular state. So here we're having two transitions on the input A going here and over here. We can also have what are called epsilon transitions go into a state like this one. So remember, epsilon transitions means that we don't actually read anything when taking that transition, whereas these other transitions, we read a character. So it's introducing a choice of whether we, can, we want to do this transition or not. And we can also have the ability of leaving out transitions. So like, say, this state or this state or even this state don't have a transition on input A. So we're actually leaving out some of the transitions. We're allowing ourselves to have choices here. So we can either have exactly one transition on a particular symbol, multiple, or zero, and we can have epsilon transitions, as many as we want. So, okay. So one of the things that we noticed when we talked about DFAs is that in every DFA on a particular input, it always does exactly one thing. Because if we observe what it does, well, let's just say the input alphabet was A and B. Well, the, the string either is the empty string, in which case you're stuck here, or it starts with an A, or it starts with a B. It's one of those two, assuming it's not empty. Which means that we have exactly one choice to do, because in a DFA, there's exactly one transition on a particular symbol. So one thing that we saw was that all DFAs have exactly one computation per string, per input string. It does exactly one thing. And that's what allowed us to get closure under complement. Because if we flipped which state was final and which one was not, that allowed us be, to show that if we just did that operation, we get the complement language because every DFA has exactly one computation per string. So what about for NFAs? So a natural question is how many computations are there in an NFA? Seems like a perfectly logical question. So note uh, right at the very beginning that if we have a DFA, it already is an NFA because the NFA doesn't have to do anything non-deterministically. We don't have to have epsilon transitions. We don't have to have multiple transitions and we don't have to leave them out. It's just that a DFA just happens to have a particular structure. NFA can, is basically just a free for all. So, it, so if the um, NFA already is a DFA, then the answer is 1, because every DFA has exactly one computation per string. So therefore, the answer is 1 if the NFA is already a DFA. But what about otherwise? Well, consider, um, let's consider an example. So let's do an example right here. So here we have a state right here that it seems a little bit artificial, but it'll, it'll actually be important. So here I'm going to have a start state right here that has a self loop on epsilon, which may seem like it does nothing, but it's only uh, designed to help us with this question. And I'm going to have a transition on A, let's assume the alphabet is A, to this state. And because it's an NFA, I, I can leave out transitions if I want to. So let's see. Well, let's consider the string um, 
epsilon. So if we just have to string epsilon, well, no matter what we do, well, we're, we're in this start state right here. We can't go over to this state if we're the empty string, because if we took this transition, we would have to read a character to start with. So we're stuck here. But because of this self-loop with the empty string, which allows us to not read anything, we can take this self-loop as many times as we want. So in fact, we have infinitely many possible computations on the string. So infinitely many. So just from the fact that we have epsilon transitions, we can go to all the way to infinitely many. But what about for the string A right here? But so you may think, OK, well, the string A, well, we start here in the start state. Therefore, we have to take this transition to go to the um, accept state right here. And you're right, we do have to do that. but for the same reason, we can be stuck here and take the epsilon transition self-loop as many times as we want because, again, it doesn't read anything. And what is more interesting here is that the computations for A always land in a final state right here, which means that we can actually get infinitely many accepting computations. So we still get infinitely many, but we get accepting computations. But now what about the string AA? Well, if we take the if, if we want to be able to read this, we got to accept the string by re, by reading the entire string and being in the final state. Well, if we want to read the the first character A, we have to take this transition, but now when we're in this state, we're uh, completely stuck. So, therefore, for this string, there are none. There are zero computations on this string, accepting or not. So there's actually no way to be able to read this string entirely. So what is actually quite interesting about NFAs is that we can get zero, one, or infinitely many, but can we, can we do better? Can we get some finite number in the middle? Is it always 0, 1, and infinity, or can we get some number in the middle? Well, we can easily give an example where we get, let's just say, 2. So here's another example where I have a start state right here, and I'm going to make use of the fact that we can have multiple transitions on the same symbol. And let's say we have something like this. Well, notice that we can, for the string A right here, well, we have to start in the start state, but we can take either one of these two routes. And we've read the entire thing in both cases, so therefore there are actually exactly two in this case. But there's something actually quite interesting here. What if I made this state not final? Well, if I made this state not final, well, A is still accepted because there's a choice that allows us the, for the string A to be accepted, namely this one up here. If I chose this one, then I won't accept. But if I chose this one, then we accept. And non-determinism means that we, as long as there's a choice that allows us to succeed, then we're good. But now let's suppose that we did that flipping final states idea that we did with the DFAs. So let's just say that I transform this, DF, this NFA right here by flipping what states are final and which ones are not. So I have exactly the same structure, but now I'm going to flip which states are final and which ones are not. But now we actually get something interesting. Before we accepted the string A via this choice right here, and in this one, the complement, so to speak, NFA, we also accept the string A. But the string A can't live in a language and the complement at the same time. So this actually tells us something interesting that it's really important for the DFA to have exactly one computation to get the closure under complement to work. If we allow ourselves to have multiple transitions, then that whole proof breaks down because we can have something like this. Okay. So that's one of the reasons why we talk about DFAs and NFAs, because DFAs have a particular use case, 
and NFAs also have a different particular use case. And what we're going to be eventually seeing is that are these two models really the same or are they different? Is there something that an NFA can recognize that a DFA can't? And you may be thinking, well, DFAs have closure under complement and NFAs, oh, oops, I didn't mean to erase. Uh, NFAs don't, so therefore they cannot possibly be the same. But that's not true because just because this particular conversion didn't work, flipping final states and, and whatnot, just because this idea doesn't work doesn't imply that some other NFA doesn't exist. Remember, for a regular language or a language of an NFA, as long as the machine exists, that is what matters, not just because one particular method doesn't work or works. Okay, so I hope that was interesting. Leave a comment below if you have found other machines similar to this that are interesting. As always, please like and subscribe to the channel. It really helps with the growth of the channel, especially commenting. Commenting really helps with the growth of the channel. And I want to thank you all for your support. If you want to support this channel additionally, there's a Patreon link as well as a Discord server. And as always, I'll see you next time.